morning everyone. My name is Carol and I'm from Parkwood Christian Fellowship. In our Sunday service on Facebook some weeks ago, we sang the song Friend of God and that set in my mind the subject of today's talk, friendship with God. Humans are social by instinct. Lockdown has shown that loss of social contact can have a negative effect on our mental health. Friendship is at the heart of God's appeal to us and he invites us into a friendship which is eternal. We relate to God as Father, worship him as King, we want to obey Jesus our Lord and Saviour and we desire to listen to the Holy Spirit as a counsellor and teacher. Some people might worry that we could become over familiar with God, but friendship with him does not mean we lose a sense of reverence for him. After all, he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Imagine what it would be like to make friends with a king. Friendships with people take shape naturally over time, and there is no set way in which to build the relationship up to a point where you feel that you can trust them with your thoughts and feelings. God gives us the freedom to choose whether to enter into friendship with him and the depth of friendship we desire. As with all friendships, the deeper they go, the more is demanded of us. But we can find a way to move on together because of the bond of friendship. One of the most well-known verses about friendship with Jesus is in John 15, verses 13 to 15, where Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learnt from my Father, I have made known to you. Wow, he may call us his friends, but do we consider him to be our friend? Here are some ways to begin to develop your friendship with God, through our praise and our pray, prayer and our worship. If you have been a Christian for any length of time, you will have been doing this already, but let's just recap. Make time for him. As in any relationship, time and effort is needed to make it grow and deepen. Open yourself up to the idea of being friends with God. We may have thought people who claimed friendship with God were over the top Scripture says in Exodus 33, verse 11, that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. We know from Scripture that Abraham was called friend of God. James 2, verse 23 says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And Isaiah 41, verse 8 says, but you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend. There are other references in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We cultivate closeness with our friends by spending time together. Likewise, we need to regularly meet with God and spend quality time to get to know him more intimately. Praise him, worship him. To quote a very old song, forget about yourselves, concentrate on him and worship him. Relax in his presence. While we can enjoy closeness with God, our intimacy with him is also built on a deep reverence for him. The Bible says in Psalm 25, verse 14, English Standard Version, The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. Cultivate silence. Tune out some of the noise in your life 
so that you can have a genuine conversation with him. Talk to him like a normal person who is interested in getting to know you. Go beyond small talk. Be real. Share secrets. He knows them anyway. Let him into the deepest places of your heart. Don't try to hide from him. You can't hide. See Psalm 139. One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have the king for a friend, is what it says in Proverbs 22, verse 11. Since God is the king of heaven and earth, might this verse also speak to what he looks for in a friend? Loving God as a friend involves him loyalty, loving him loyally. In spite of difficulties, just as he loves us. This conversation with God is something that we can do when we're doing practical things. Washing the car, housework, taking exercise, as well as in our quiet time. Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of John and Charles Wesley, uh, 18th century evangelists and hymn writers, used to sit in a chair in her kitchen with her apron pulled over her head while ten children read, studied, played around her for two hours a day to be able to spend time with God. The children knew that if she sat like that, they needed to leave her alone. Listen, learn to listen. God speaks in stillness, not always the stillness of the surroundings, but in the stillness of your heart. And this is why Jesus tells us, I no longer, no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learnt from my father, I have made known to you. That's John 15, verse 15. Just as friends would listen attentively to what each other are saying, so we too can cultivate our friendship with Jesus when we pay close attention to what he has to say. Repent. Say sorry for things that you may have done to hurt your relationship with him. Honesty and humility are crucial elements to being able to build any relationship. Be happy when he gives guidance and trust his corrections. When we read the Bible, do we see it as tedious rules to follow or do we delight in his wise instructions to us? Check out this verse in Proverbs 27 verse 9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. When our close friends give us good, sincere advice, we appreciate them deeply. A measure of how much we are a friend to God is how much we find joy in the guidance in his word. There are also times when our friends would correct us out of love. It may hurt us for a while, but we know that they care for us and want to see us grow. We wouldn't like for them only to tell us what tickles our ears. Proverbs 27 verse, verses 5 and 6 says, It is better open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Similarly, God rebukes us from time to time when we aren't walking right because he loves us and desires us to grow in maturity. It's not just enough to listen to God tell us <clears throat> what's on his heart, including his advice and corrections for us. We also must do what he tells us to do. Jesus says as much in John 15 verse 14. You are my friends if you do what I command. We build our friendship with God when we obey what God commands us to do. Proverbs 17, verse 17 says, Compare friendship with loyal brotherhood. A friend loves 
at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. Good friends go through thick and thin together instead of abandoning each other when the going gets tough. There will be times in our relationship with God when things become difficult. Scripture also paints friendship as a beautiful picture of closeness as in the friendship of David and Jonathan and that you can find in 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 and 3. In a greater way, because of Jesus, we are now united with the Lord and one with him in spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. Finally, the love of friendship is self-giving. As I mentioned earlier, after Jesus said in John 15 verse 13, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. He proved his love for us by laying down his life on the cross so that we can be made alive with Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 5. Jesus surrendered to death so that we may have friendship with God. Thank you for listening today. I hope this can be a springboard to encourage you to move into a deeper relationship with God, particularly if this is something new to you. I'll leave you with some words from a very old hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. God bless you all.